What will happen if this sleeping giant comes to life? Previous volcanic eruptions in Yellowstone National Park have been worldwide disasters. Scientists are currently attempting to forecast how this ticking time bomb will explode or fizzle out. So stick to this video on the unknown facts as we discover what scientists have to say about this volcano eruption. In the western part of the US, there is a giant that is fast asleep. Even though it sometimes moves, it hasn't woken up from its sleep in nearly 70,000 years. But when it finally wakes up, it might roar and shake with a force that has never been seen before. This giant is the supervolcano that lies under Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone National Park is a wildlife and forest preserve that stretches across Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. The volcano is actually in northwest Wyoming, which is where most of Yellowstone is. The ground above Yellowstone's supervolcano sits on a hot spot made of magma, which is a rock that is molten or almost molten. The ground rises as magma flows into a magma chamber or reservoir about 6 to 10 kilometers below the park. When the magma starts to cool and harden, the ground starts to fall. Volcanologists have been measuring this activity since 1923, and they say that between 2004 and 2009, the ground rose about 25 centimeters, but in 2010, the ground began to sink. There are two different magma bodies beneath Yellowstone. The one that is closer to the surface is made up of rhyolite, which is a type of rock that is high in silica content. It extends from 3 to 10 miles beneath the surface, has a length of approximately 90 kilometers and a width of approximately 40 kilometers. There is only around 5 to 15 percent liquid remaining in the chamber, which is mostly solid. The deeper reservoir is made up of basalt, which is a type of rock that has low levels of silica and it is located between 20 and 50 kilometers below the surface. In spite of the fact that it is approximately 4.5 times larger than the shallow chamber, the deeper chamber only holds approximately 2% melt. The technique that researchers use to decipher this information is similar to medical CT scans, which involve sending x-rays through a patient's body in order to create three-dimensional images of the organs and other internal structures. In a manner that is analogous, a technique known as seismic tomography makes use of hundreds to thousands of earthquakes that have been recorded by dozens of stations in order to measure the speed of seismic waves as they travel through the Earth. These measurements provide geophysicists with the data necessary to create three-dimensional pictures of structures that lie below the surface. When these seismic velocities are compared with values that have not been thermally affected on average, scientists are able to determine the composition of the object. Scientists aren't sure if Yellowstone will erupt soon because it has been slowly and steadily getting bigger, and if it does, people worry about how strong the next eruption might be. Dr. Steve Anderson, a volcanologist and earth sciences professor at the University of Northern Colorado says, The big question is, if Yellowstone started shaking tomorrow, what could we expect? He don't think we know what to expect for sure. Even though scientists don't know for sure what will happen, they have a good idea, and most of them say it's not likely to be the end of the world. Earthquakes can't be predicted yet, but modern monitoring of earthquakes in Yellowstone with seismographs and GPS helps scientists figure out how stressed the Earth's crust is. Seismographs are devices that measure where and how big an earthquake is. These forces have the potential to initiate magma flow as well as earthquakes. Yellowstone National Park is located in an area of the western U.S. that is known for its high level of geologic activity. Large earthquakes have taken place there in the past, such as the M7.3 Hebgen Lake earthquake that took place just west of Yellowstone National Park, and they will continue to take place there in the future. However, it is impossible to predict when they will take place. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, which is a partnership between the University of Utah and other institutions, uses seismograph stations to carefully monitor earthquakes in the wider Yellowstone area and collaborates with these institutions to maintain an eye on the entire volcanic system. There is a constant watch on Yellowstone Volcano for any indicators of volcanic activity. The United States Geological Survey Yellowstone National Park, the University of Utah, the University of Wyoming, the United National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the Montana Bureau of Mines and Geology, the Idaho Geological Survey, and the Wyoming State Geological Survey are all partners in the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. The YVO offers real-time data for earthquakes, ground deformation, stream flow, and certain stream temperatures. YVO keeps a careful eye on the volcanic activity at Yellowstone. 
In addition, in order to better understand the Yellowstone volcano, scientists from the YVO work together with other scientists from all over the world. So what lessons can we take from the past? Still, the recent underground activity makes people wonder how big an eruption might be. In the last 10 years, the volcano has grown at the fastest rate ever seen. There are also between 1,000 and 3,000 earthquakes a year on average in Yellowstone. Most have a magnitude of three or fewer, which makes them almost impossible to notice. Still, these earthquakes show scientists how quickly the magma chamber under the park is filling up. If the shaking and rattling in the park get worse, it could be because magma was recently added to the reservoir. Scientists don't think the rumblings in the magma chamber pose a threat anytime soon, even though the number of earthquakes has gone up. But because people haven't been around long enough to see everything that happens in Yellowstone, it's hard to know exactly what's going on. This makes it hard for geologists to predict what Yellowstone will do next. When you look at the volcano's history from a long time ago, you can find some clues. Geological evidence shows that Yellowstone has had three huge eruptions in the last 2.1 million years. Volcanologists say that about 600 to 800,000 years passed between each eruption. These are signs of the last big event, which is thought to have happened about 640,000 years ago, all over the park and thousands of kilometers of the land around it. Each of the previous eruptions sent out huge amounts of volcanic ash, gas, magma and other volcanic debris that covered most of the continental U.S. Some of the material has even been found in Louisiana. After each of these eruptions, the Yellowstone supervolcano collapsed on itself, sucking in trees, mountains, and everything else in the area. A caldera is the name for the crater that this makes. The Yellowstone caldera is another name for the Yellowstone supervolcano. Yellowstone would face a huge natural risk if a volcano erupted and made a caldera. Scientists say that the last Yellowstone eruption was 1,000 times bigger than the famous 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption, which killed 56 people and thousands of animals and burned hundreds of square kilometers of land in Washington and Oregon. The Yellowstone supervolcano's last explosion sent a deadly cloud of hot ash, molten rock, and deadly gases thousands of meters into the air. A third of the continent was probably completely in the dark. Pyroclastic flows, which are fast-moving currents of hot, dry rock pieces and gases, move through the area at frightening speeds, burying or breaking everything in their way. The once beautiful landscape was burned four kilometers by magma that came out of the ground. The Yellowstone caldera, which is 50 kilometers wide and 70 kilometers long, shows signs of the last eruption. In a place called the Lava Creek Tuff, you can see the thick volcanic debris that was left behind after the eruption. The United States Geological Survey says it is unlikely that there will be another big eruption like the last one. In fact, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory says that hydrothermal explosions, which is eruptions of steam and hot water instead of molten rock and lava flows, are the most likely things that could happen in the future. Even though lava flows are a type of magmatic eruption, they are not as bad as the explosions that make calderas. Lava flows don't destroy everything right away. Instead, they come out of the ground slowly over days, months, or even years. They also don't happen very often. About 70,000 years ago, Yellowstone had its last lava flow. Hikers can still see evidence of these eruptions in the form of different rock layers along the trails in the park. Near the cliffs around the upper geyser basin, near Old Faithful, which is a geyser and one of the most visited places in the park, there are signs of more recent lava flows. There are around 1,350 potentially active volcanoes in the Earth, excluding the continuous bands of volcanoes on the ocean floor near spreading hubs such as the Mid-Atlantic Range. There have been volcanic eruptions at approximately 500 of those 1,350 volcanoes in recorded history. The term Ring of Fire refers to the area where many of them are located and it runs along the edge of the Pacific Ocean. Volcanoes in the Cascade Range and Alaska, the Aleutian Volcanic Chain, are considered to be a part of the ring, whereas Hawaiian volcanoes grow over a hot spot that is located in the center of the ring. Within the United States and its territories, there are 161 volcanoes that have the potential to be active. The U.S. Geological Survey investigates and keeps a close eye on the potential dangers posed by volcanoes found within the U.S. and its territories. Both the Oregon State University's Volcano World and the Smithsonian Institution's Global Volcanism Program are excellent resources for information regarding volcanoes that are located in countries other than the U.S. 
If we consider the most damaging volcanic eruption in U.S. history, the explosion of Mount St. Helens in Washington State on May 18, 1980 was the most disastrous natural occurrence in U.S. history. The Nova Erupta or Katmai volcano in Alaska produced significantly more debris during its eruption in 1912. Yet, as a result of the region's geographic isolation and low population density, there were no fatalities among humans and only minor property damage. On the other hand, the eruption of Mount St. Helens resulted in the loss of lives as well as massive destruction in a very short amount of time. Today, Yellowstone is sleeping, and scientists are watching its every sneeze and cough to try to figure out what it will do next. Yellowstone has been sleeping for thousands of years, but that doesn't mean it won't wake up one day. The force that has been building up under the park has been held back. The question is still, when and how hard? So this was all about the video. And if you like today's video, then do check out more videos like this on our channel. Also do subscribe to our channel and hit the like button for more updates.